that paradigm, that paradigm shift that depends so much on terminology and conceptualizing these ideas, and that tends to open all these doors. Sometimes to bring under the same umbrella many things that were scattered and isolated, and sometimes to isolate and open new doors within the movement possibilities. So the idea of play, the idea of communicating with objects, with the floor, with another person, to communicate with the elements, with gravity, with centrifugal forces. All this stuff that as a kid, you basically treat all those things as one. It's a movement thing. But then with time, the adults in your life start to kind of isolate you and tell you, this is not that, this is not this, this is sports, this is studies, this is serious, and this is play. Well, it's all play. You can do this all with basic tools. Is that out of necessity? Exactly the opposite of necessity. The more money was involved in my life, the more money I made, more of a point I made it to not be supported, not be dependent, and not support commercial products. I'm a big believer in education. The technologies and the products, they create a lot of dependency and they strip us of the basic research. High-tech shoes, low-tech feet. The more expensive the toys, the cheaper is the mover. Yeah, one of my students said. I think it's important to work on this thing and not to depend on all those gadgets and tips and tricks in the majority of the time. They were developed for a necessity, and that necessity was certain comforts, certain disabilities or problems, but they also create disabilities. You put on this highly supportive footwear, your foot is going to lose function. You don't demand it to work well. So I'm a big believer is don't wrap up your joints with supporting accessories, wrap your joints with exercise. Hey, what's going on is people don't touch the floor anymore, you know? People simply don't make the simplest contact with the ground. And I'm not even talking about some esoteric layer of some ion exchange with the earth, but I'm talking really practically, do you even touch the floor daily? <laughs> it's almost like a philosophical thing for me. If I was on a day of travel and I did not get the chance to do that just before going to sleep, I would make one contact between my hands and the floor. We are losing function. We are not meant to walk on our hands all day long, but we are definitely opportunistic movers, which means if I have uh, two rocks here and I want to pass in between them, I will momentarily support myself and propel myself in between them. So the hands are meant to communicate with all these objects and the floor, crawling, quadrupedaling. Yeah, and we can take it into the beautiful realm of inversion, handstands and acrobatics as well, but that is beyond the point.